Realtors. Hey guys, Anthony Beckham here. Welcome to the channel where real estate is life. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five steps that you're gonna to need to know as you are becoming a new real estate agent. So make sure to stick around because all these five steps are vastly important if you want to have success as a new real estate agent. So let's go ahead and hop right into it. So first of all, being a real estate agent, that means that you're gonna be representing buyers and sellers in the purchase of the biggest asset in their lives. You're gonna be handling all the paperwork, the contracts, you're gonna be advising them throughout the process, you know, talking to inspectors, appraisers, title companies, lenders, and holding your client's hand throughout the whole thing. I know, it sounds really fun, doesn't it? Now, the main reason that most people wanna get into real estate, of course, is the fun side of things. The fact that you're your own boss as an independent contractor. The fact that you make your own schedule, and best of all, you can make as much money as you want. I mean, your income is dependent on how hard you work and how much effort you put into it. I don't know of any other careers that, say, an 18-year-old kid could go out and make as much as a doctor. That is one of the coolest things about being a real estate agent. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and hop into step number one. Step number one, of course, is to get your real estate license. Unfortunately, you can't go out there and help people buy or sell the largest assets that they'll ever purchase without first getting licensed to do so. So the process is a little bit different depending on the state you're in. Some states require as little as 30 hours of study time, where my state requires 150 hours of study time. Regardless of where you're at, you should actually be able to just do all of the studying online. There's accredited programs that you can find for your state and you get all your hours in, which a lot of times people just click through it, and then they give you some sort of certificate which then allows you to actually go in and take your real estate exam. There's two parts of the exam. There's your state and your national, and it only costs about a few hundred dollars usually for the program. So it isn't much to get started. Once you finish the program, you pay a couple hundred bucks for it, you get through all your study hours, then at that point you can actually set up the time to take your test and do your state and national exam. Because most of the tests are proctored, you used to have to actually go in to a testing facility and do it there, but I know a lot of states are actually allowing you to even do it online nowadays, proctored, say, through your laptop. So it's a lot easier to do nowadays. And remember, getting the license is kind of the easy part. It doesn't really teach you anything about how to be a good real estate agent. It's just kind of the first hurdle to get over. And while I say that it is the easy part, it did take me four tries for me to get my real estate license. That means I failed three times before I actually passed the test. And I think that that makes me a prime example of why the real estate licensing doesn't really matter. It's more of a formality and isn't gonna make a difference of you being a good real estate agent or not. Step number two, pick a broker. So this is one of the most misunderstood parts of becoming a new real estate agent that I hear most agents talk about, where they go in, they sign up with the first broker that they interview with because that broker was willing to hire them. As a real estate agent, you are a 1099 independent contractor. This isn't a job. You don't get hired as you would at any other traditional job since you are an independent contractor. With that being said, if you go in and you sign up with the first broker that you sit down with, that is the complete wrong approach. Instead, I want you to think of it more like you are going in and interviewing them. I recommend actually going into every real estate office in your area and interviewing the brokers and think of it more like these are different companies what do they offer me for me to want to join with them? And, you know, create a checklist of the things that are important to you, whether that's the culture, you know, is there a lot of top producers there? What are the splits? How much money do you keep? What are the fees, the desk fees? All those things are things that you're gonna wanna take into consideration whenever you're picking a brokerage. 
Another thing that I hear people say is like on the forums or on YouTube, they're like, which brokerage is the best? Or, you know, Remax is the best, KW is the best, EXP is the best. Well, that doesn't really necessarily ring true. While I may have a great Remax office in my town, they are all independently owned and operated. So the Remax in your town may not be created equal. Maybe they have all the lowest, you know, real estate producers that sell two houses a year. They all have a bad attitude. It's poorly managed. You got outrageous desk fees, but yet mine over here, that's where all the top producers want to be. It has great culture, great training. Like I said, it doesn't matter necessarily what the company is. You actually want to go in and meet these people and get a feel for the office yourself. In my small town, I interviewed all seven local brokerages and I created a spreadsheet and I put in each of their splits and did the math to see, you know, at the average sales point, how many houses would I have to sell where, you know, there's a definitive best brokerage for me? Because that was what was most important to me was the money. And by creating the spreadsheet, I was able to determine one office in particular that had a cap and none of the other offices had caps at that time. And so that one, I was gonna make substantially more money working there with, than with another brokerage. But if I would've went and just signed up with the first broker that I sat down with, I would've missed out on that and I would've missed out on tens of thousands of dollars and the culture that I was really looking for. When you sit down with each of these brokers, you're gonna wanna ask them you know, about their training and the different perks that they offer. And I would recommend even asking if you can sit in on one of their training sessions before you actually sign up with them. This is gonna give you a feel of what they offer and get a feel for the culture of the office. Another tip that I think will help you guys out a lot is look for the offices that have the most top producing agents. It seems like, at least in my area, most of the offices kind of fit to a specific person. You know, we kind of have one brokerage that has more of the older people, one brokerage that has more of the newer people, another brokerage that most of the top producers are at, and chances are you're gonna see that in your market as well. So obviously you're gonna wanna pick a brokerage that has more top producers that you're rubbing shoulders with than the brokerage that has a bunch of agents that sell two houses a year and are Debbie Downers blaming the market for why they suck at real estate. I also made a video all about this topic where I break it down for like 10, 15 minutes or something like that. So feel free to click on that where you can learn even more in depth about how to choose a real estate brokerage. Step number three, study and train. So like I said before, just because you have your real estate agent licensing, you'll quickly realize that doesn't mean that you necessarily know how to sell real estate. And they especially don't teach you how to become a top producing real estate agent who makes more than attorneys and doctors. As a new real estate agent, there are gonna be a ton of skills that you're going to have to build. And these are gonna be anything from your communication skills, negotiation skills. There's a lot of firsts. Think about hiring your first assistant and training them and lead generation. These are all things that they don't teach you in real estate school that you're gonna have to go learn on your own. And one of the best things is the fact that you can start doing this before you even have your real estate license. I mean, self-development and learning these skills is gonna be a very important factor to you having success as a brand new real estate agent. I just started with an Audible subscription. I bought a bunch of audiobooks and I would listen to them like while I was working out, while I was brushing my teeth, while I was taking a shower, eating breakfast, driving around. I mean, I basically figured that any time that I'm doing some mindless activity, I might as well be studying and learning. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull up my Audible app. So listening level, I have achieved the master class of listening level. Looks like I've collected most of the badges. I've read over 124 books through Audible. Over one month and almost four days of my life, I have spent reading these books. So you gotta just put that into perspective, like how much could that affect your business and your self-development when you're putting in that much time? And it's really not even that hard. You just do it while you're doing those other mindless activities. And I actually put a link in the description where you can sign up for Audible. And I believe that they'll even give you two free books and a 30-day free trial. So make sure to check that out. 
I still try to get in at least two hours a day of self-development. And I know that that sounds like a lot, but whenever you look at just all the things that you do as far as like eating, driving around, you may be able to get in two plus hours just in your drive time or commute to work or something like that. So anytime that you would normally listen to music or listen to silence, you might as well be self-developing. Once I tore through 100 plus Audible titles, I started listening to podcasts. And I just have, I think it's the Google Podcast app, and some of the first ones I started listening to was Bigger Pockets and GSD Mode, and they have hundreds of episodes, so you can basically just binge watch them. Some of my favorites today are the Carrot Cast and Real Estate Disruptors. So all of these different podcasts are basically these people that have done awesome things in their careers and in their real estate business, so hundreds of homes or whatever the case is, and you would probably have to spend thousands of dollars just to be in the same room with most of these guys, especially just to hear their best tips and tricks for an hour plus. Yet on these podcasts, you can listen to them talk and absorb all that information for free. And if you think about books, you know, audiobooks, books in general, it's the same thing. I mean, a lot of the times these are the best lessons that these people have spent their whole lives learning through business and everything. And for 20 bucks or less, you can buy that and soak all that in and learn from their mistakes so that you don't have to. You can even take this a full step further by looking into coaching. So whenever I was a brand new real estate agent, I actually paid for Joshua Smith's course. It was like $1,000 and there was all these modules to go through and he basically taught you how to be a top producing real estate agent. I also did like one-on-one -on -one weekly coaching with Tom Ferry, which was like 1400 bucks a month. And so, Coaching comes in all shapes and sizes, but of course you don't have to go that route. There's enough out there with audio books, podcasts, and YouTube like you're watching right now to learn everything that you need to know and more. There's more out there than what you could probably even absorb in a lifetime. And for the sake of self-development, for the one-time price of free, you can hit that subscribe button. Looking at the stats, about 95% of you guys that watch our videos aren't subscribed, so it helps us out a ton. And of course, we're gonna help get you to that top producing real estate status and become a millionaire through real estate. Step number four, make a daily schedule. So I talk to new real estate agents all the time that just aren't having success. They aren't doing any production, they aren't selling any houses, and they don't know why. Then I go ahead and ask them, you know, what have you done to generate leads? What have you done to generate business? How many calls did you make today? One or two? Uh, how many did you make this week? This month? You know, and you start digging into what they're actually doing on a daily basis. And while they may think that they're staying busy, you know, designing their business card or their website or cleaning their desk or whatever, doing all this busy work, they think that they're working all these hours, but whenever it really comes down to it, I may get more done than they do from a productivity standpoint within just a couple hours of working versus their full day of busy work. So what it comes down to for most of these new real estate agents is just the fact that they don't know what they don't know. They don't know what they're supposed to be doing with their time. So instead they're filling it with this busy work that doesn't produce any business. Really, your success as a real estate agent is gonna be determined just by how many conversations you're having with qualified prospects every single day. So of course, you know, watching your YouTube videos, your audio books, your coaching, all of those things that we talked about, can shorten that learning curve, but you have to have some sort of plan, some sort of daily schedule to follow. That way you're making sure that you're setting time aside for those most important tasks. So if you don't have a schedule that's conducive to creating business, you're not gonna have success in your real estate business or any business for that matter. What you wanna do as a new real estate agent is come up with a schedule that fits with your lifestyle. You're gonna to wanna, to, of course, take care of yourself first as far as your sleep, you know, getting your exercise, fitting breakfast in, in the morning, your meditation, stretching, whatever it is that you do, and then allotting time for the most important business tasks, which are usually going to be your calls. My suggestion for you as a new real estate agent is to make sure to set that time aside in the morning. Start off with your self-development, start off with your workout routine, getting in your breakfast, and be in the office by 9 a.m. 
you're gonna always have little fires that pop up and things you're gonna have to deal with at the first thing in the morning. So from 9 to 9.30 a.m., knock out all of those fires so that you can focus on phone calls. Then from 9.30 to even as far as noon, make calls. I mean, the amount of houses that you sell is literally just a function of how many motivated buyers and sellers you talk to on a daily basis. That is what is going to turn into sales for you and commission checks later on down the road. So now that you've made your calls from 9.30 to noon, take noon to about 12.30 to eat lunch, take a little bit of a breather, and then from 12.30 to one, put out all the fires that have started since you started making your calls at 9.30, because there's always gonna be some. And then still to this day, 1 p.m. on is whenever I start doing my appointments. Now, if you don't have appointments yet, or if you just have a day that only has a couple appointments or whatever the case is, then use that time to either make more phone calls, that's gonna be the most productive use of time, or that would be the time to start doing that busy work. Design your business card, work on your website, work on content creation, but make sure that you get all of that follow-up and prospecting done early in the morning and setting that time aside to do it. And quite honestly, if you nail that 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. time slot with your calls and just being focused in that amount of time, you're honestly gonna get more productive work done in those few hours than most agents do in an entire week. And that's really not an exaggeration. You know, there's many agents that don't make any calls during the week and, you know, don't do any follow-up because they get too caught up in the busy work. So if you're setting that time aside from the start and getting used to that from the beginning as a new real estate agent, you're going to have a ton of success in your real estate career. 10 minutes of focus time is equivalent to 10 plus hours of that busy work. So get that daily schedule locked in. Even though you're a new real estate agent, you're an independent contractor, you can go grocery shopping in the middle of the day, you can binge watch Tiger King and get wine drunk at noon. Really, if you don't treat this like a business, it's not going to pay you like it's a business. So let's go and get you some leads at step number five. Number five, generating leads. Now, this is a fun one because this is really where it all begins, as with lead generation and following up with those leads with that couple hours of time that we have set aside where you're calling the people that are in your database. If you don't have a database or CRM, which it stands for Customer Relationship Management Software, you're gonna wanna get one. And I mean, this can be as simple as even just a free spreadsheet that you download online. I think that they have some other free CRMs that you can download. And it's really just a way to keep everything organized so that you have reminders on who to call, how frequently, notes on the last conversations that you had, and wow, you might think, ah, you know, I got my contacts in my phone. Well, you think that, but once I teach you how to generate all these leads and you have hundreds or even thousands of people in your database like I do, you're not gonna be able to keep up on it without having everything organized. Now, you really don't need anything fancy for your CRM. You can even use an Excel spreadsheet. But if you wanna use the same CRM that I use, and it actually includes a front-end website as well with the software, you can actually waive the $200 setup fee by using the link down in the description. So if you want to use the same CRM that I've been using since 2017, the link is down below. Now that we have a way to keep all of your leads organized, it's time to start generating some business and collecting some commission checks. So there are plenty of ways to do this, and I suggest picking two of the things that we're gonna talk about today that you feel best suits your personality. There are different categories of lead generation. So first we'll look at active lead generation, which is gonna be your things like door knocking, cold calling, you can cold call everybody in town or you can get more precise and call for sale by owners or expired listings and this is kind of considered the more aggressive outbound style approach to generating leads then there's the more passive approaches like say open houses where you basically set that up and then all of the qualified buyers come directly to you or you can take the more organic passive approach of creating content you know writing blog articles studying search engine optimization and trying to make your website rank highly on google as a form of lead generation 
Or you can even go the paid marketing route by paying for leads through Zillow.com or Realtor.com or doing pay-per-click, you know, PPC advertising through Google. I've literally done every single one of these lead generation strategies and I've narrowed it down to really two main ones that I work on today. Today, I focus a lot on creating content and that organic flow to our website and just kind of being the CEO and you know face of our company. And then another big part that feeds my buyer's agents leads every day is those online leads that is paid marketing that I pay for every month where I'm more or less buying leads from other websites. I really think it all just depends on where you're at in your business, how much of a budget you have and what best suits your personality. Some people are gonna feel a lot more confident in their conversion skills face to face, you know, like open houses. Others are gonna see that as an inefficiency and think, you know, I can pound out hundreds of phone calls a day, that's a lot more touches. Maybe they're better on the phone. Or if you're really techie, then you can study that SEO, that PPC, do the online side. Or if you feel like you're a blossoming personality, hop in front of that camera and start filming content. Really, the possibilities are endless. And that's one of the fun things about being a real estate agent and being a business owner is that you can really choose to build it in a way that suits your lifestyle and your personality. I've literally made anywhere from tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars on each one of these lead generation strategies that I talked about. It's really just the fact that you need to pick two of them and you need to stick to it day after day, week after week, month after month, and it will basically guarantee that you get results. Having your CRM organized and taking all these leads that you're learning how to generate and putting them in there, staying on top of it, following your daily schedule, you know, calling those people, following up with them for a couple hours a day, and you are gonna be well on your way to making six figures even as a new real estate agent. So go out there, get your real estate license and follow these five steps so you can go out there and make some big commission checks. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button, slap around the like button, not for me, but for the YouTube algorithm so that we can get in front of more people. I love it whenever you guys comment, feel free to ask me questions or hit me up on Instagram at Anthony A. Beckham. I love you guys and I will see you next week. See ya. Bye.